My next guest tonight is currently riding around Australia on a unicycle raising money for cancer research, which is a sentence you don't often get to say. If you haven't seen him on a road near you, you may have seen him on your telly starring in The Secret Life of Us, Underbelly or Rush. Would you please welcome one of the good guys of showbiz, Samuel Johnson. <laughs> There is a big part of me that wants to conduct the whole interview without mentioning the way you're dressed. <laughs> yes, it's obscene, but... No, 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 we should start with the way you're dressed and the reason you're dressed that way. Uh, I'm uh, dressed in this way because uh, I love my sister mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm riding around the country on a unicycle for her. So, yes, this is, these are my uh, exercising clothes. I rode my unicycle here, so... Yeah, see, this is the thing. I mean, we've got a map here of, of the, mm -hmm. what you've covered around Australia thus yep, far. Yep. Uh, the pink is what you've done, is That's that right? That's right, yeah. And the blue is what you've yet to do. That's correct. How yeah. much money have you raised so far? Uh, over 600000 600000 yeah. yeah, amazing. Yeah. And we should point out, you, you are doing all this for your sister. Yes, yes, yes. My, my, my sister's dying of breast cancer. Right. Um, so, um, and she's been fighting different cancers since she was about 10. Yeah, um, yeah. So I actually don't remember life without her being sick. Yeah. So I'm kind of, kind of keen, um, as she kind of hits the tw her twilight kind of time, to, yeah. to kind of do something for her. And the footage is just absolutely amazing. Some of the things, some of the sights you've seen just... I've had, yeah. I've had the most amazing time. It's been an insane trip. I, um, that's on the Edna Data track there. Oh. Um, there's Uluru as well. Yeah, we went right up the centre and, um, yeah, I've done a big loop around the, around the West Coast, seen some amazing places, met some amazing people. The whole experience is very hard to define in words. Yeah, and that's why these, these pictures... It, this one in particular, for me, just must be beautiful out there in the middle of nowhere. Oh, it's, it's fabulous. It seems like a silly way to get around, but w when you're out there, actually, it's not too bad. You really? Know? Yeah, yeah, well, I don't miss much going at 11.3k an hour. <laughs> <laughs> does, it, does it hurt? I bet you've got sort of saddle rash and... Oh, yeah. The, don't have to show the, us. The, the, the... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's, um, the pain hits after about four or five minutes. Um, <laughs> yeah, and you're usually on, in the saddle for 8 to 10, sometimes 12 or 14 hours a day, so... As if it's not hard enough, you're doing challenges along the way. Yeah, yeah, well, it's just a, fab it's just a fabulous way to engage with the communities that we kind of come across. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've been issued all kinds of crazy challenges by, uh, by virtually every community I go through. I've swum with Crocs in Darwin, I've ridden steers at rodeos, I've cross-dressed, I've... Um, oh, the worst one was... Um, eating a, um, a live huntsman in, um, in Wilmington. Mm. Um, it's all for a donation, of course. Like, of I don't course, just yeah. do this for fun. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of, yeah, you... Um, so, yeah, I've done some crazy stuff. Would you like to see footage of Samuel eating a huntsman? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here it is. OK, don't think. You're just making it worse. You're just making it worse. Put it in there and just grab it and bite it and kill it. Stry! <laughs> <laughs> Serious, um, like I'm arachnophobic, so like it took me actually 40 minutes oh. just to get up the courage to hold it. Oh. Um, and, and, I had, and I had, I had, I literally had like four and a half major anxiety attacks on my way to eating it. Right. And, and, and then, and the texture, unbelievable, because you've got, you've got the kind of, <laughs> no, no, seriously, you've got the, you've got the hairy legs. Oh. Um, their pincers are like glass, so they're really crunchy. Oh. And, and then you've got like the pussy abdomen bit. <laughs> Seriously, seriously, three days later, after about, you know, what, six or seven toothbrushes, yep. I was still finding legs in my teeth. <laughs> it, was, it was absolutely horrific. I, I, you've just taken me right back there. I'm, oh, yeah, it was awful. It oh, was this, awful. Is, this must be what it would be like if the Bush Tucker Man appeared on MasterChef. <laughs>
the, thing, the, the thing I've realised is it doesn't help you get over your fears. It's like when I climbed the Gloucester tree, I thought, oh, wow, you know, you know, it's 50 metres up, yeah. just a bunch of rungs hanging out of a tree going up in a, in a spiral. Yeah. I thought, if I can do this, I'll conquer my fear of heights, you know. This will be amazing. So I get up it, uh, you know, get back down it, and I'm like, right, yeah, I'm still scared of heights. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't conquer my fear of heights, I just conquered the Gloucester tree. You know, if I had to climb it again, I'd yeah. probably still shit myself. You know? <laughs> and and how, how's your sister enjoying all of this? Oh, look, this is great. You know, we've, she... She works as hard behind the scenes on, on, on Love Your Sister as, as I do out on the road. Yeah. This is a, this is a shared kind of um, project for us, one that we've been working on for over three years. Right. Um, right. Uh, it took us two and a half years just to get it on the road. So for us to watch it all unfold um, is a dream come true. You know, it's, to be able to share something like this with my sister um, at this time and to be able to kind of provide some meaning in amongst all the madness is, is really, really special, you know. And if yeah. people want to help, where, where do they go? What's the website? Um, yeah, um, loveyoursister.com. Org. There's a cabillion ways you can help, you know. Uh, yeah. Jump on and check it out. OK, now, I want to check something that I read about you during the week. Is it true you got your first agent at the age of 14 in your first ever acting role? Yeah, first time I ever jumped onto a stage in a school play. I got home that night and it uh, was before mobiles and, uh, yeah, the mm. phone rang at about 11.30 and it was uh, Fred Skepsy's late ex-wife. The director, Fred Skepsy. Yeah. Yeah. And she called up and said, oh, I was wondering whether you want to audition to be on... Uh, be on this TV commercial. And I said, don't you have to be good looking to be on telly? <laughs> <laughs> and, she, and she laughed and said, we'll see. And um, yeah, I got the gig and got an agent out of it. And within about six months, I was out earning my dad. It was just, a, I completely asked it. <laughs> 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 and then you became one of the most successful voiceover artists in Australia uh, on so many different ads, uh, and so, you know, ads that you wouldn't even realise that it was you. Was it weird hearing your voice so often? Well, mate, I'm the same as everyone, you know, you don't like the sound of your own voice, so you right. hear it and you're just like, oh, man, you know, like, it's... Um, <laughs> and when I was little, I had a really chronic lisp. So, so to, to become kind of like a voice dude was quite funny, considering at primary school I pretty much sounded like Nick. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, somehow it panned out. God knows how. <laughs> and what about for, like, partners and people you're going out with and even exes hearing your voice on the radio? That must have been weird. Yeah, cos, you know, they break up with you and, and that's it. That's all they want to know. Yeah. And then you keep popping up on their radio. <laughs> Like, one, of my, one of my exes, hi, Vanessa, in Warrnambool. <laughs> uh, she's happily married with kids now, probably having a great old time of it. But, yeah, she piffed the, um, the radio through, through a window. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I can't blame her, too. I find my voice fairly irritating. So. Well, do you know what? I, I once went out with a girl in, in uh, Dublin yeah. and she was the voice of Vodafone in Ireland. Um, but she was the voice that when you called up to get your messages... It was her voice that went, you have one new message. <laughs> and often she would then be the message. <laughs> so she'd go, you've one new message. Hi, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> um, good luck with the ride, good luck with the fundraising and so much love to your sister. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please thank Samuel Johnson. <laughs>